That's what I thought was going on, but apparently not, according to the van driver the next morning, which he is a holy roller, and that is nothing wrong with that, but he's a holy roller, and um, <laughs> that morning, as we were on our way to the airport, he proceeded to tell us that the group, the other group that was there, not the Bible study people, but the people that I thought were there for a runaway reception, those people were swingers. It was a swinger convention. And apparently they've had it there at that hotel for maybe the past five years or a little more. And what the van driver told us is that normally, normally after the swinger convention, they usually have uh, dump trucks or something ready because they just Well, 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 let me tell you about this weekend and all of the craziness that we encounter as flight crews when it comes to hotels. So I didn't get enough rest, proper rest, just because both uh, overnights, which will be nameless, I won't say the hotel chain, they are part of chains. Actually, it's the same one. It is the same one but in two different states, two Commonwealth states, by the way. Um, well, the first night we were there and they had two events going on. One where people were getting dressed up. Maybe it was like a wedding or something or a reception. And then the other event, it was like a bunch of parents, mostly men with their boys. Their, you know, kids were like under, like 10 and under. So that was quite annoying. A lot of jumping in elevators and banging on the walls, just craziness. And these dads couldn't get together to keep their boys under control. Wilding out, wilding out while I'm trying to sleep. Yeah, so that was Saturday night. And then Sunday, well, no, I finished up Sunday. That was Friday night. And then Saturday night was at this other hotel in the other Commonwealth. And... Apparent well, two things going on, and I must mention these two things because they're quite opposite of each other. So I walked past to order like some food from the hotel, and as I was walking by, there was a a sign that said Bible study here, Bible study something, whatever. They had that um, conference room, and they were finishing up. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. I don't know why they had it at a hotel, but that's their business, okay. Um, and then the other opposite side, there was some kind of thing going on. And it looked like a reception after a wedding because people were dressed up as if you were like going to a wedding or something. That's what I thought was going on, but apparently not, according to the van driver the next morning, which he is a holy roller. And that is nothing wrong with that, but he's a holy roller. And um, <laughs> that morning, as we were on our way to the airport, he proceeded to tell us that the group, the other group that was there, not the Bible study people, but the people that I thought were there for a runaway reception, those people were swingers. It was a swinger convention. And apparently they've had it there at that hotel for maybe the past five years or a little more. And what the van driver told us is that normally, normally after the swinger convention, they usually have uh, dump trucks or something ready because they just get rid of the beds. Now, I will personally burn the <laughs> but maybe they are going off collecting the beds and they go put them somewhere in some kind of inferno. I don't know. Whatever. They get dumped. They get trash because you had swingers in your hotel. Swingers. If you don't know, I'm not talking about dancing. I'm talking about sexual partners being swapped, husbands, wives, girlfriends, whatever, or group sex, other kind of crap. Swingers, look it up. Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that's quite disturbing. When I'm there as flight crew, we flew into Bumfo, wherever, that commonwealth, and um, I'm there to get some rest, you know, get some food, get some rest, go to sleep, wake up and do the same thing I did yesterday at 30, 35,000 feet in the air. But yes, now I got to worry about swinger juices on my damn bed in my bedroom. I mean, my bedroom <laughs> in my hotel room. Swinger juices. That is disgusting. 
Anyway, I did have to actually call down to the hotel front desk because the swingers on my right decided they wanted to play MJ. And they thought they was going to play MJ all night. Now, I love me some MJ off the wall. You know, um, the Thriller album, great. Those are classics. And I listen to that when I want to listen to it. But not that night because I needed my rest. Okay? I could clearly hear what they were playing to. I called down and said, hey, they're playing Michael Jackson next to me. I got to get up in the morning. Can you do something about this? I was like, okay, hold on. I hung up. And then five minutes later, the music stopped. Great. But, you know, they were in the hallways smoking weed. I could smell that, making all kinds of noise, just wilding out. I know they were partying and everything. But next time, the hotel just needs to make sure they don't put us on the floors with these people. If you're going to have those kind of conventions or whatever, give them their own floor. Or put them at another wing so they're away from us. They're supposed to be doing that anyway as flight crews. You know, when we, if you don't know out there, which a lot of people don't, we set up contracts. We, excuse me. The airline that I work for sets up contracts with hotels. And there's certain rules that have to be honored by the contract so that we're safe as crew members. We can get plenty of rest that's undisturbed. And we have transportation to and fro the hotel airport. Um, transportation is big. Okay. Sometimes they put things in the contract where they provide us with breakfast or at least a to-go bag or um, a discount on the hotel restaurants. Sometimes the hotel doesn't have a gym, but there's a close gym nearby and they work out something with that. Sometimes a free pass, sometimes a discounted pass, things like that. Those little things are in the contract. But the main thing that will get us kicked out of, or not kicked out of a hotel, the main thing where my company will drop The hotel is we don't get transportation, proper transportation to and from the airport, mostly to the airport where we have to report to work and get that flight out on time. That'll null and void that contract if that happens more than once because their priority is getting those flights out. Their priority at my airline and most airlines, but this airline is the completion factor and on-time departures. Nothing else matters. And I mean... Nothing else matters. Do you understand what I just said? Nothing else matters but that. I know they say safety first and all that mumbo jumbo BS. And it has to really be first because if people get hurt and stuff, people can't complete their job. But I swear to God, I mean every word that I say when I tell you. Nothing else matters. But getting that flight out on time and that damn completion factor, that will be on your ass. That will be on your ass. So that was my weekend um, in a nutshell. And uh, mind you, I have a seniority, high enough seniority where I don't really work the weekends. 90% of the time, but I'm coming off a vacation month. And yeah, that's what I just end up into a weekend trip which is fine. I'll work one here and there. But I've done enough weekends in this career with this company that I really shouldn't have to do very many. Yes, that's how arrogant I am. But it's true. I've paid my dues. Okay. So anyway, this podcast is really about (laughs) crazy ass flight attendants. From the past up until now, stories that I've been seeing that Some flight attendants have been doing some very unethical things. And this is not a representation of all the flight attendants in all of America or North America or the world. These are individuals that happen to have this uh, occupation doing stupid shit because they themselves are ridiculous and crazy. But that's what we're going to talk about. All right, so let's start with number one. Uh, This happened, it was published anyway, in the Washington Post on October 3rd, 2022 at 8 a.m. The story is by Hannah Sampson, and the title is Flight Attendant Charged with Stealing $8,000, a $8,000 bracelet from the TSA line. As a Florida woman in flight attendant uniform was caught on video grabbing a bracelet set. D.C. area authorities have said. Now, I've heard these stories before. 
Um, but they're usually about other passengers, stealing from other passengers as they were going through the TSA line. Um, I think in Philly, actually, they caught a guy stealing um, another passenger's laptop. And they caught him because they have cameras above some of these TSA lines. And they can see things like that. And that's how um, they caught that. So not that any of my listeners would ever do anything like that. But if you're thinking about doing something like that, you better think twice. Because there may be video evidence of it. Don't do it. We're all trying to just get from one place, A to B. I mean, I know the economy is going to crap, but just don't do it. So anyway, so the article goes on about how the woman, oh, wow, was identified as a Republic Airways flight attendant. And she was arrested that Monday at uh, DCA, which is Reagan National Airport says after the authorities said she took a passenger's bracelet set from Transportation Security Administration checkpoint. The Metropolitan Washington Airport's Authority spokesman Crystal Nozell said Rebecca Valley, wow, 60 of Wesley Chapel, Florida, works for the regional carrier and was charged with one count of grand larceny. The owner of the jewelry reported it was valued at $8,000, Nozel said. Now, I can believe it probably was about $8,000. It's DCA. There's a lot of people coming through Reagan National Airport with a lot of money. You know, they call them DC elitists for a reason. This is, wow. But what I'm really surprised about, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm surprised that she's a 60-year-old woman doing things like this. That kind of caught me. Because I'm reading this article as I'm recording this podcast. I didn't read it beforehand. I just read the headline, so I knew it was, you know, crazy enough flight attendants out there doing, or a few of us. But anyway, it goes on to read that the police department for the DCA area airports authority did not immediately respond to a request for the arrest report on Monday. TSA spokesman Lisa Farbstein said in an email that the victim, who has not been identified, told security workers that her jewelry was missing after she went through the checkpoint. So, I wonder what this article is going to go on. How did she get caught? Let's, let's find out. It says, officers of the Metropolitan Washington Airport's Authority Police Department and TSA examined records. Hmm. Re- excuse me. Recordings. What kind of recordings are these? Probably video. Like I said, they have video above, above the, uh, the screening belt. So, again, people, don't do it. Okay, so anyway, let me continue on. I'm sorry, I interrupted myself. So it says, yeah, they examined the recordings of the checkpoint and saw a second traveler in a flight attendant uniform pick up the jury, Farbstein said. Police found the alleged thief in the airport terminal. Wow. Republic Airways did not respond to a request for comment late Monday. The regional carrier operates flights from America, for American Eagle Delta Connection, and United Express. Wow. That's crazy. Mm. And it sure wasn't worth it. You know, I don't, maybe a lot of flight crew don't realize that. I realize that, like I said, that there are a lot of times there's cameras above and people don't realize it. There's cameras all over the airport, people. So make sure you're aware. And I see them. They try to keep them kind of... Uh, how would I say, blurred out or not obvious. But, I mean, we all know those stupid cameras are in those black balls that they have above your head. I'm very aware of that stuff. I'm very aware of passengers with their camera phones out. Camera phones. With their smartphones that have cameras. We all have that. So you just have to be aware of that. I mean, you shouldn't be or wanting to take other people's possessions anyway. Um, But... Just be aware of that. They are above the screening belts, whether you realize it or not. So I don't know what this flight attendant was thinking. Um, I guess she thought she was going to get away with it. I don't know. I can't speak about what's going through her mind at that moment. But wow. Yeah. Keep an eye on your things. That's why they want people. They want you to push your um, items through when you go through. That helps them out, too. They know it's you coming through. And then you can kind of watch as you're coming through your stuff coming down the line. 
There's not people that went ahead of you and can grab your stuff. Things like that. So I'm looking at one tweet here. They're talking about how the flight attendant stealing from a passenger. The global recession really must be on the way. Wow. Now this is a... Uh, this tweet is from Washington, oh, excuse me, Washingtonian Problems. Yeah, let me repeat that. Not the A flight attendant stealing from a passenger. The global recession really must be on the way. And then they put in there, uh, let me see, Washington Problem Alert. My mom has pre-check and was at DCA this morning. They made her take off her jewelry at TSA and someone stole it. They ran the tapes and it was a freaking flight attendant. Wow. So remember, folks, you're at TSA. They are recording. They are recording you. Don't pull any crap. Just get your stuff. Get your stuff. So then the content article continues on with, you know, the arrest echoed a similar scenario from last weekend. It says that a man was arrested after being accused of stealing a wedding ban. Wow. From a security checkpoint at Newark Liberty International Airport. The suspect was waiting for his flight to leave when police took him into custody. Authorities returned the ring to its owner. Cool. At least they were able to catch them. Uh, that's pretty quick, you know. It's pretty quick. He thought, and you know, probably in his mindset, he thought like, oh, I'm going through security. I'll swipe that up. I'll get on my flight. Nobody's going to catch me. Oh, no, they caught you, sucker. You got busted. And they caught you before you got on your flight. Wow. But that was a pas another passenger. But like I said, I've heard stories of other passengers doing things like this to another passenger. I don't really hear too many stories about flight attendants doing this type of stuff. So on, more into, on to more crazy news about flight attendants. So this story is a little kind of personal for me because uh, I kind of know somebody in this story. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, anyway, this is, goes all the way back to 2011. Well, the story was originally published in 2011. From what I can remember, it was around that time. Um, so this article is coming from the Seattle Times. And it's titled, Former Flight Attendant Sentenced for Setting Plane Fire. Okay? They were sentenced for setting a plane on fire. On purpose. So this was originally published December 21st, 2011. Again, this is Seattle Times. Uh, the subtitle is a former flight attendant who his lawyer claims wanted to be a hero when he set fire to an airplane bathroom and then helped put out the blaze was sentenced Friday to more than six years in prison. Wow. See, I didn't follow up with what happened to this guy. But uh, yeah, so he got six years in prison. I originally heard the story because I know a friend of a friend. Uh, this actually happened at Compass Airlines. And they were going, oh, they were going from Minneapolis to Canada. So Regina, Saskatchewan is where they were going. Or Regina. I think it's Regina is how they say it. I actually know somebody from Regina. Um, yeah, uh, I heard the story. Basically, how I heard this story was, and I had read it a few times online, is basically this dude had got junior manned and if for those listeners out there most of you don't know what the hell that is uh junior manning at airlines just means that if i'm supposed to work let's say i have a three-day trip from friday through sunday and i'm off on monday through wednesday but for whatever reason the airline is short staffed and they can't cover whatever's going on on monday which is my day off and I end my trip on Sunday, they have a little message for me. And I have to check my messages before I go home that says, hey, we're going to junior man your ass for Monday and Tuesday because we're short staff and we need you to operate some flights. So your Monday and Tuesday is no longer yours. So it's, you're being forced to work. Basically, you're being forced to work your days off with limitation because there's rest requirements and things like that and um, airline contracts unions we have unions things like that so it's a limitation to that they can't just do it whenever we're not robots we're human beings but yes it can happen minimally to an extent which which is lined out in our contracts so this kid this guy um was junior manned 
And I heard he was pissed off about it. And he worked the trip and was vindictive. I don't know what he caught himself doing. And he went into the lavatory once they were at cruise, reached in with a lighter and set the paper towels on fire in the lavatory, which caused smoke and stuff in the cabin and set off the alarms. And then, you know, we have a procedure that we're supposed to do to put out the fire and stuff. They did all that. They land the aircraft in an emergency landing. And then, um, cause, you know, authorities got involved and kept everybody there and questioned everybody. And they finally broke that flight attendant down and they admitted that they set the ba- the lavatory, which is the airplane bathroom, they set the lavatory on fire on purpose because he was pissed off that he got Junior Man. That's how I know this story. Okay, whatever it says in this article, I don't know. Let's find out together. But, uh, yeah, that's how I know this story. And a friend of a friend was on that flight. And he had only been there like two months. New employee. Yeah. So it's really crazy. I mean, and dangerous. Like, what if that had gotten so out of control that people died? Like, what a freaking idiot. People could have died. Smoke inhalation, all that crap. Like, I don't understand what was going through this flight attendant's mind. Even if it was something stupid, like he wanted to be a hero, you could have killed people. You would have been a murderer, dummy. What the? Oh, my God. Craziness. But, you know, something else similar happened in small town VA, uh, which will be nameless. And I was on my day off, mind you. Um, I was heading back home and all these fire trucks and uh, I saw a bomb squad car and rescue and all that was flying past me. And I was like, you know, I lived in small town VA. Okay, that Commonwealth. And I was like, what's going on? Where are these people going? Because I never really see that going on there. But uh, yeah, I go home, take a nap, whatever. Three hours later, I watched the local news. Why I was watching the local news, I can't tell you, but I was. And they were talking about, at our small regional airport, about how there was a bomb threat. And come to find out, it was a flight attendant that went into the lavatory while the plane was on the ground, mind you, put a note in there that said there's a bomb on this plane. And another passenger went to use the lavatory while they were still on the ground as they were boarding and found it and told the flight attendant. The flight attendant pretended that like it was new to them. They evacuated the plane quickly. Of course, they had to call the authorities out. They do an investigation and let anybody leave. The passengers that were on board, flight crew, no one. That flight attendant broke down and admitted that they wrote that stupid note. Please tell me, why on earth would a flight attendant or anybody at their place of employment do something like that? I mean, were they trying to cancel the flight so they didn't have to go anywhere that day? And if you were, call out sick, because that is goddamn extreme to do something crazy like that. Crazy. Okay, so back to that flight attendant at Compass Airlines. I just wanted to read a little bit more of the article to you so you can understand what went on. Uh, And I believe they thought this guy worked for like a United Express carrier before him, before he came to Compass. He might have done this before. Anyway, the guy's last name is Rojas. They said he uh, allegedly helped put the fire out. So what? You started it, psycho. So no charges had been filed in that case. But later, um, so that plane was forced to make an emergency landing in Fargo, North Dakota. And there were no injuries reported. There were about 72 passengers on board and four crew members. But they said that he cited in letters from people aboard the plane that they have been traumatized by the incident. Well, no, no shit. You're on an airplane and you see black smoke and the thing's on fire. And you see flight attendants putting on PBEs, that's portable breathing equipment, and running through the cabin with a fire extinguisher, yeah, that's going to be traumatizing, okay? Hey guys, just real quick, if you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe and shoot me an email.